Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today, we're going to do the top five perfumes for the month of December 2022. Yes, that was like Wednesday Adam's moment. Obsessed with the show at the moment. Speaking of December, great Netflix show, uh, Tim Burton. Awesome. Jenna Ortega, nailed it. So I'm... <laughs> I'm Saturday Adams, okay? I got the partition on the side because I'm super deco and I live stream Saturdays usually. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already before we get to the top five perfumes. And uh, you can also join me on Patreon, super deco all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Now, thank you to all my patrons who have pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. So I'm going to be reading your chats. Let me know your comments. Let me know. What do you think about the selection? It's always fun to guess which perfumes for the people who are watching live to, to guess which perfumes I've, I've chosen for this month. And uh, for, for those of you who are watching this video later, pitch in in the comment section down below and let us know what are your favorites for this month. Here goes. Oh, let's do this, y'all. The first one. Listen, it's December. It's the end of the year. 2022 has been a, a roller coaster of, of a year. Um, it hasn't been the best of years. It has been, creatively speaking, really good, but it's also been a struggle. A lot of things are just not going right in the world right now. So, plus the days are really short. You know, it's winter time. Well, not winter officially yet as I'm filming this video, but the shortest day of the year is upon us in the second half of December. And then from that moment on, the days will start getting longer. So there's also hope in December. There's that, you know, there's that trajectory we're on. December is going to deliver the shortest day of the year, but it's also going to deliver that shift when the days start getting longer and longer bit by bit. So it's a scary time. It's a dark time. It's a cold time, but there's also hope in the air. So the darkness for me is definitely, uh, felt and smell wise also much appreciated really it, it kind of lets me uh, think about my past think about this entire year like what i've achieved what my goals were what you know you, it's it's a reflection upon oneself the end of the year at least it is to me every end of the year is a reflection upon my myself and that reflection also means kind of letting go of what you've been that entire year it's kind of like a sort of a death in a certain way and that whole transitional deadly phase is in here. It's in Ensemble Mythique by Guerlain. I think the camera is not filming anymore. That's why it's not focusing. So there you have it. It is, unfortunately, uh, Guerlain made this as a 125 ml bottle, which is really annoying because you can't really travel with it. Uh, because a 125 mil when you're flying, you can't take it on board with you because 100 mil is the limit. Anything higher than 100 mil, you got to kind of let it go. You know, they won't let you carry it in the plane unless you don't uh, put it into the check-in luggage. So I don't travel with this one often, but I would love to. Oh, oh my God. the ambergris in here mixed in with the rose it's just so deep and spooky and haunting and definitive all encompassing um it's not for everyone it's it's not a blind buy i mean actually mine was <laughs> but i loved it so much but i would not recommend you to blind purchase this one because it's not for everyone and it can get very very indolic amber gris type of indolic on the skin so you have to be you have to like that because otherwise it's this thing is insane beautiful for uh december for right now for this state of mind i'm in this darkness uh this um reflection upon how devastating in many ways this year was, but then also the hope for a better time ahead. Oh my gosh. But check out the review of this one on my channel because, you know, there's a whole poem that goes with this perfume and I kind of talk about that entire 
cyclical type of death and darkness that's connected to on some mythique also on my channel so this is my number one for december number two is a new addition to my collection and i am obsessed with it it is literally the opposite of darkness if you want the opposite of ensemble mythique and i know i'm like so bipolar right now because like what the hell <laughs> talking about darkness 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 and now like my next one is light 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 suntan lotion in the middle of winter but with warmth there's one particular perfume that hits the spot for me at this time of year because it is so full of ylang ylang it is so creamy and dense and buttery and yet it's full of white florals so it's also a, like a very sunny perfume but it's it's so buttery <laughs> I, I can't it's so so intoxicating so it manages to stay summery but also super warm which means now in the cold days this thing is such an energy boost it's such a mood booster and that perfume is a lot of you probably won't know it but it's Isabe's gardenia such a weird bottle uh, it's hard to film it i mean it's like pure gold so look, look how it reflects the light the bottle is like Oh, honey, this is gold. It is gardenia. I'm trying to, it says, it's really hard to um, get it there. So it's a brand from the 30s. Uh, this formulation is from 2006, seven, but then it's been reformulated in 2017. I, I, I'm, I am so addicted to this thing. Um, it's very heavy. Even the stopper is like full metal, the, the whole thing. It's kind of like a niche, but it doesn't smell really very niche. I mean, the bottle is insane. It's like, you know, it's like, wait, hold on a minute. Like, is this, is this the bottle or, or is this the bottle? You know what I mean? And the font is really ugly. I, they should have done something better with the little, anyway, it doesn't matter. Who cares? The smell of it is what matters to me. And it smells divine. It is like the most rich, dense suntan lotion to use in the middle of winter. The gardenia in here is amazing. The ylang ylang, the butter. It is so buttery. It's not gourmand. It doesn't go too sweet. It doesn't go too... <sighs> it's borderline everything, you know? It's like almost gourmand. It's almost sweet, but it's not. And beautifully balanced and blended white floral. Oh my God, I love it. I had some issues with this bottle. Uh, because when I first started, sp when I first sprayed it, the sprayer was not really flexible. So it stayed in. So it started leaking. I got a heart attack. But then I figured out you got to pull out the stopper all over again. So after a couple of times of using it, now the stopper is relatively functional. I still am very cautious to pull it out properly. Maybe just mine was a little bit defective, but I didn't lose much liquid and now it's all fine. It's not leaking anymore. And I have flown with this one already, so it also handled, the bottle handled really well the pressure of the airplane as well. Divine. I will do a proper review of Gardenia Isabe. As of now, while I'm filming my top five for the month of December, I have not yet reviewed this one, but I will review it soon. So the brand is spelled Isabe. I-S-A-B-A. No, B-E-Y, I-S-A-B-E-Y. I'm not sponsored, by the way. I bought this perfume myself. Just to be very clear, of course, the camera is not focusing. There. I mean, maybe you can see it. It's down here is the name of the brand. I-S-A-B-E-Y. And originally, it was the brand was initiated by the Rothschilds because they were in a mood. The Rothschilds were like, you know what? Let's do a perfume, darling. And so they did a perfume and uh, a collection of perfumes. And one of them was Gardenia, different Gardenia than this one. But then the, the brand, they just got bored of it or for some reason the brand stopped. And now another company purchased Isabe and they're, you know, remaking the perfumes in the brand. The company that purchased them is, uh, well, it's made in France and it's called Panouge, Panouge, Papouge. I can't read it. Anyway, that's my number two. Number three. 
it's Chanel number no. five, y'all. Uh, I have a couple of droplets in this bottle, but you know I'm more for my spray. It's it's the, I know. Listen, it's the holiday season. You can't go wrong with Chanel number no. five. The pure perfume, of course. It had to be there. Uh, I you know travel with my spray version, seven point five mil. And this one is just love. Yeah, there's no life without Chanel number no. five. I. Honest to God, sometimes I say to myself, I'm so lucky to live in a time where Chanel number no. five was already invented. Like, could you imagine if I lived in 1810 and then died in 1850 and I would have never known that this thing, oh my God, no, <laughs> I'm, this is how good this is. Oh man. And plus it smells of snow. You know how Ernest Beau wanted it to smell of snow. Uh, so there's a lot of winter connected to Chanel number no. five. Uh, also sadness, loss, the ending of something, the beginning of something else. Oh my God, the love of my life. And I do prefer it in this container than in the actual glass bottle. I know, but I just love the art deco simplicity of this thing. Just to die for. <sighs> Debbie says, I would have been reborn. Hmm. A drop of Chanel number no. five says blue, right? Ah. Ah. Yeah, styling secret. Yeah. You're quoting Jennifer Coolidge. You smell like the 4th of July. It's a good one. Did I nail it? I'm really bad at this, but I think I kind of channeled Jennifer Coolidge quite a bit. By the way, I'm really enjoying the White Lotus. Season two, didn't like the first episode. Then they played Mina in the second episode and it got kind of, but it's very dark and sad. Oh my God, I just watched the fifth episode and I'm kind of devastated. All right, now actually speaking of the White Lotus and the devastation and the depression of it, it's it's really, I watched the, the fifth episode yesterday and I got really gloomy. So much sadness in that show. Like it's so, so, so sad. So to match that Italian Sicilian vibe, everything is, you see how everything is holistic. Everything blends in and is connected. My number four is an Italian perfume. Now this one is from Firenze, not from Sicily, but it's Lorenzo Villoresi's Sandalo. Now this thing, uh, you can't buy it anymore in the blue container because now this perfume has shifted into their kind of heritage line. And they have reformulated it. I have still the OG formula from many years ago. Um, oh God, this thing is so dense. It is a smoky, dusty, screechy sandalwood. Um, it is historic. It is heavy. It is intoxicating it is something that i would only ever recommend to wear home alone not something to wear when you're outside this thing is so overpowering and it is so um introvert that it makes no sense to wear something so introvert it's bizarre because yes it's introverted but it screams how is it that possible? Well, it's possible because this is a reflection of the interior of yourself. So inside you might be screaming, but on the outside you don't show it. And so this perfume, of course, when it's inside the bottle, you don't smell it. So it's the introvert. But once you spray it out, it's like all over the place. So this is a perfume that I recommend using when you're alone at home and you want to do some self-reflecting, some deep self-reflection. You let it burst. You burst the perfume onto you and that self-reflection pops out. It's not something to wear on the street where others can smell. It, it just isn't. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful perfume for self-reflection. Especially this time of year. This thing is, um, it's the end. You know, if, if, if somebody asks me, well, what's the perfume of the end? Well, it's Sandalo by Lorenzo Villoresi. There's a darkness to it. There's a... Um, renaissance flair to this perfume but there's a sickness about it as well yes jenno it's an introverted perfume that screams i mean it you know like when you're an introvert internally 
with yourself, you're having a heck of a conversation, but externally nobody sees because you're introverted. Everything is introspective. Everything is inside. But when you go inside, inside is a screen. That's what introversion is. So this perfume is it, it functions that way. You should only wear it when you're when you are ready with yourself, alone with yourself, to dive deep inside of yourself. Gloria says, I call those silent screams. Debbie says, I understand that analogy. Trina says, I don't believe I've ever smelled it. It's it's very different. It's not the type of sandalwood that you are going to smell, like let's say from Bois des Îles by Chanel or Samsara by Guerlain. Uh, it's not that, or uh, Paris Venise uh, by Chanel. It's not that type of sandalwood. This is a different sandalwood. Um, It's an ancient, ancient sandalwood from times long gone, thousands of years in the past. Um, it is beautiful, but a very, very potent, potent little uh, concoction that I really, really only recommend when you're alone at home in the darkness. Maybe just a couple of candles lit and just enjoy your own solitude. Ah. Uh, Amazing. And the fifth one for the month of December is, again, the opposite. <laughs> it's, again, hope, light, future. And it is a sandalwood as well, but it's a, it's a completely different sandalwood than Sandalo by Lorenzo Villoresi. This is the perfume that you think of when you think about the future, when you think about hope something new, new horizons, a rebirth. And that would be this little baby, which was launched this year, Hermes Cabriol. What a beauty. Look at that. I used up already half a bottle. I, I literally bought this perfume like two or three weeks ago. So if you flip it upside down, you see actually more. Well, on the side, you see how much is really used up. But yeah, almost half a bottle. Oh my gosh. Um, hope in a bottle. It's complex. It's complicated. You know, it's not easy. It's not telling you oh, everything's going to be good. You know, it's meant for kids three years and up, but also for grown ups. It's alcohol free. Osmanthus, honeysuckle, and sandalwood, basically. The, the three major components of this fragrance. Oh, you know what? Mm, mm -mm. It's kind of tough when you first spray it. It's aggressive, but then it mellows out and it becomes a soft, beautiful, dreamy, hopeful smell. Uh, it can also go poopy, baby poop. <laughs> but diaper chic, baby. It's not like happiness and sunshine in a bottle like gardenia this one is completely oh my god look the bottle like just flattened out like bloop, oh bloop, and it just like turns <laughs> so this bottle like drives me nuts um like this is just like pure happiness sophisticated happiness this one is complex this one is more about working towards the hope and it's a beautiful perfume to end the year. I think, I mean, they just launched it like September, October of this year. So it is a end of year launch. Sold out everywhere. Uh, quite surprising, really, because, I mean, you know, Hermes, um, I think they did not see this coming, <laughs> that Cabriol would be that successful. Oh, it's a deep, it's a deep rooted happiness. It's, it's, um, it's a happiness that has a solid base, a sturdy, healthy base. Just the best type of happiness you can have. It's it's consoling you that everything's going to be okay. Oh, Ollie, you've secured a bottle of Cabriol? Good for you. I hope you're enjoying it. Mm. Cabriol. Hermes. 
fabulous. I, what can I say? Just so dreamy. Actually, all five of these together, they could not be more different from one another. They could not be more strangely different from one another. You know what I mean? Like Ensemble Mythique, Isabe Gardenia, Lorenzo Villoresi, Sandalo, Chanel Number no. 5, the Parfum, Cabriol, like... And yet they, they they all represent me right now in this moment in time. And I think how amazing it is, how beautifully and incredibly to the point perfumes can explain who we are. You know, they talk to us, you know, through, through the way they smell and through the, through the way that they bind and combine themselves with, our, with us, with our perceptions with our own essential oils, with our own hormones, whatever you want. But the fact that we are, that we feel attracted to certain perfumes in certain periods of time more than others tells a story about us. And that's the beauty of perfumes. And to be able to kind of, you know, go on this journey of exper experiencing and experimenting with different perfumes all the time and finding fine-tuning the smell even more to your life in the moment when you are living, it's the best thing ever. It, it's just, it enhances your life so much, in my life. It makes me so much more happy to be alive because I feel like, oh, these perfumes, they get it. They know exactly how I feel in this moment and they're explaining to me how I feel through smell. Hands down, the best thing. And I, I, you know, I truly believe that um, it's such a pity when we say, oh, I only have one perfume. I only use one perfume. I have one signature perfume. That's it. And I'm like, it's not a, but perfumes shouldn't be about that. They're about much more. And you're much more than one smell. As a human being, you're multifaceted. You have so much going on in your life, you know, in terms of your identity, your personality, your character. You can't just have one smell to define it all, like Lord of the Rings, one ring to rule them all. It's impossible because you are the ring, not the perfumes. Keep in mind, keep in mind. Sijita says, love hearing you talk about perfumes. Thank you so much. Very high in selection. Great job, Deco. Perfumes make me happy too. They really make me happy as well. I know this is a little bit of a tricky selection this time. I usually don't want to, like, you know, overdo it with the niches, with the special ones. But, you know, technically, technically, you could get number five everywhere. And Cabriol, as soon as they reproduce it, will be available in most places. The other three are a little bit more tricky. So it is a little bit niche or a little bit more, you know, on the, on the expensive side. Like, this is one of their kind of Guerlain. You can get this one in all Guerlain good uh, Guerlain stores, but it's not for everyone. Ah. Lord of the Rings, oh, Lord of the Perfumes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you all the best new year, the best ending to this 2022, but an even better 2023. Wonderful sunshine, blue horizons, great, successful, healthy, full of love life ahead of you for you for your loved ones your family your friends your lovers your kids your pets whatever uh wishing you the best of times and wishing you to never give up on love and until next time subscribe <laughs>